Penny, coming, Captain Drummond. I took the liberty of putting a little brandy in it, sir. It wasn't a liberty, Tenny. That was an act of Christian kindness. I rather thought you might say so, sir. Well, Tenny, this is our last day as a bachelor. Yes, sir. After today, we'll be a married man, sir. And if we're not, it won't be our fault this time. Ah, uh, let's see. We've done everything Miss Phyllis asked us to. We've stayed shut up in the house for days. No newspapers, no letters, no guns. Tenny, you did dispose of all the guns. Have you found it? What's it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All the guns. Yes, Tenny, I believe you're cons... Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not catching cold now, is it? You can blame Algy if we are. It was his idea of taking away our trousers so we couldn't leave the house. It was a very effective idea, if I may say so, sir. Tenny, he didn't leave a pair by any chance. Not even rompers, sir. They've all gone with the luggage. Except, of course, the ones that Mr. Longworth's bringing with him. And no money, either. I hope Colonel Nielsen won't forget to bring that when he comes. Oh, I think Colonel Nielsen can be relied upon for that, sir. And the tickets to Nice, who has them? Mr. Longworth, sir. What, Algy? Tickets and trousers both? Oh, that's quite a responsibility for one man. Especially for Mr. Longworth, if I may say so, sir. Uh, I think I'd better check up on him, Tenny. Oh, pardon me, sir. We promised Miss Phyllis that we wouldn't use the telephone except in emergency. But this is an emergency, Tenny. Now, supposing Algy brought the tickets and forgot the trousers. Can you imagine a honeymoon under circumstances like that? I can, sir. Rather awkward, I'd say, sir. Then we'll agree that this is an emergency? Oh, definitely, sir. That is, it has all the earmarks of one. Hello, Exchange. Get me a... Four, 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 sir. Algy Longworth, this end. Hello, are you there? Oh, it's you, old fellow. Wedding? What wedding? Oh, my wedding, you blithering idiot. Now listen, Algy, pay strict attention. Have you got the tickets? You bet I have, right here in my pocket. Good. Uh, now, listen carefully, Algy. Have you got my trousers? If he has them. May I suggest, sir, that you inquire about mine? Yes, and have you got Tenny's trousers? Yes, he has them, too. Thank you, sir. What, Algy? Algy, have you got your own trousers? Have I got my own trousers? Now, you, old boy, I... Uh-oh. You! I forgot to put them on. What'll I do? Captain Drummond is on the wire, sir. All right, put him through. Hello, Hugh, what do you want now? Yes, of course I've got your money and the marriage license, yes. Well, I simply thought it might be a good idea to... All you have to do is to stay inside that house of yours and keep out of trouble. What? I simply ask if you were certain this wedding isn't dragging you away from some uh, important case. No, there's not a thing on my desk you can stick your long, unwanted, interfering nose into, Hugh Drummond. And you're supposed not to talk on the telephone. Goodbye. Hello? Of course it's Phyllis. Hugh, darling, you promised not to use the telephone. Has anything happened? No, 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 darling. I just wanted to know if... Uh, if she has the rings, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, have you got the rings? Of course I've got the rings. Now, will you behave yourself and do as you've been told? Oh, but, sweetheart, I am. She has the rings. And if I don't get out of this place soon, I'll go crazy. Pardon me, sir. We shall go crazy, sir. Yes, we shall go crazy. I'm leaving right now to pick up Colonel Nielsen at Greystone Manor. We'll be there in no time at all. Of course I love you. Goodbye, sweet. Well, Tenny, she's on her way. Nothing can stop us now. This time, we're going to be married. It would seem so, sir. It's self-sacrifice that's done it, Tenny. Staying shut up here for days, weeks, years, centuries. But it's worth it, Tenny. It's worth it. I dare say so. May I make a suggestion, sir? Well, certainly. What is it? The telephone, sir. Yes, what about? It might be the one weak link in an otherwise invincible chain, sir. You're right, Tenny. We might be lured into something over the wire. Precisely, sir. Ah, thank you. Now we are protected. And not wholly so. Hmm? May I further suggest so? Oh, an excellent idea, Tenny. I rather like it, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
Phillips. Phillips, where are you? Colonel Nielsen. Good evening, Colonel. Ah. And who are you? I'm afraid Scotland Yard is slipping. You didn't wear a beard when you ran away, and your face is darker. The African sun. The African sun. I see. The photographs on our files were a much younger man. Richard Lane. Some kind of an ex-diplomat. Decorated by the Crown during the war for services of unusual merit. Oh, the Crown made a mistake. <laughs> so you do remember me? Scotland Yard never forgets a spy until he is shot. Oh, Colonel, let's avoid the unpleasant words. Won't you join me? Oh, how nice of you. Well, may I suggest the sherry? You'll find it excellent. Oh, fine. Aren't you a bit curious as to why I'm here? No, 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 no. You've undoubtedly come all the way from Africa to give yourself up. <laughs> Scarcely that. Well, perhaps you've come to return the plans of the Brenton bomber, which you auctioned off to an enemy government uh, 12 years ago. My, you have an excellent memory, Colonel. Uh, so they tell me. I suppose it surprised you that the fox comes hunting for the hound. You doubtless expect to get away. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You see, uh, had I called upon you at the yard, the odds would have been too great, even for me. Mm, I dare say. Oh, yes, yes. Will you excuse me for a moment? Oh. oh, no, wait a moment. I'm sorry, Carla. I'm only trying to help you. Here's the key. Oh, my apologies. Luck seems to have turned against me. You want to know that all important papers are kept in the yard? Yes, I should have thought about that. You were preparing to attend Captain Drummond's wedding, weren't you? How do you know about Drummond's wedding? Your man Phillips was quite informative. It will simplify things a great deal if you are equally so. And if I retain my clam-like silence? Won't you sit down? You servicemen are all alike. Pretty much the same in spirit. Admirable, too, in a way. Now, you, for example, remind me of Commander Knox when I requested information about the 18-inch coast gun. So you were responsible for his disappearance? Yes. Many great nations will pay money for each other's war secrets. Really? A great deal of money. Now, isn't it a fact, Colonel, that your government has designs for a radio wave disintegrator which will make it impossible for an enemy to intercept your signal during time of war? I hadn't heard of it. Oh, come, come. But the signal apparatus, invented by one of the odds own radio technicians. You know all about it. You're going to tell me. And just how do you propose to make me tell you? If you persist in being obstinate, Colonel, I'm afraid you'll be late for Captain Drummond's wedding. Nielsen. And you are? Miss Clavering. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Miss Clavering. Uh, Where's Phillips? Well, this is Phillips' night off. His night off? Yes, cinema, I believe. I talked to him a little while ago. It must have been rather sudden. It was rather sudden. Well, I'm in a frightful hurry. I wonder if you'd be good enough to tell the Colonel I'm here. Uh, Miss Clavering, uh, perhaps I'd better explain. You see, uh, I'm the new tenant of Greystone Manor. The new tenant? Yes. But I talked to the Colonel only this morning. And he didn't tell you? No. Well, that's strange. Of course, the Colonel's a busy man, but he turned the place over to me today. And he's not here? No. He, uh, he's gone to Rockham Lodge to be with Captain Drummond. Then I must hurry. Well, Miss Clavering, uh, since we're going to be neighbors, I, I do hope to see more of you and Captain Drummond. You know about the wedding? Yes, the Colonel told me, and might I offer my good wishes? Thank you. Do you mind if I ask you something? No, not at all. I have the strangest feeling of having known you before. No, I hardly think so. I couldn't have forgotten so charming an acquaintance. That's very nice of you. 
Good night. Good night, Miss Clavery. Captain Drummond at Rockingham Lodge. Hurry, please. But they must answer. Someone's there, I know. Try again. <laughs> louder, Penny, louder. I know. <laughs> a wish for the Highland nectar. Oh, Penny, you anticipate my every wish. With the perfume of the purple heather in every drop, sir. Well, I do believe you're a poet. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and a good fellow. Well, you're not so bad yourself, sir. Thank you. Well, Penny, since it's our last day as a bachelor, so we drink to... Miss Phyllis, sir? Aye. And tis a bonny last she is, sir. Elsie, our pants. Ready, Penny? Sound off. Oh, we're coming. 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 something terrible. Who, me? It's the Colonel. He's gone. With my money, the scoundrel. He's been kidnapped. Do you hear that, Penny? Somebody stole the Colonel. Great Scott, sir. What will they be taking next? Generals? A man with a beard. And a cast in one eye. Oh, Hugh, please be serious. There were two men. One with a beard. I couldn't see the oh, other. Oh, no, darling, you've got things all mixed up. I'm the one who finds bearded villains, not you. Oh, Tenny, you believe me, don't you? Oh, uh, that is, uh... <laughs> we stay in the house and try to keep out of mischief, and now you come along. I know you've got them hidden in the car. You. Well, where is he? I told you, I stopped at Greystone to pick him up, and the man with a beard said he was the new tenant. Oh, no, Colonel Nielsen wouldn't let Greystone to anyone. He said the Colonel had come on here. But I went back and watched. Good work, darling. They brought Colonel Newton out unconscious and took him away in his own car. Way? Where? I don't know. I tried to phone you. I cut the wires. Tenny! Coming, son? As usual, coming, son. Your head, sir. What's that? Mr. Longworth removed our firearms, sir. So I took the precaution of hiding these. <clears throat> Tenny, you said there were no guns in the house. Pardon me, sir. These are not guns. These are pistols. See, darling, we kept our word. Good work, Tenny. I rather like it, Tom. Hurry, Hugh, hurry! I say, you, Fish! I I've got your pants out. I mean, where are you going? Greystone Manor. Greystone Manor? You look in there, Tony. I'll look in there. You'll come with me. There's the Colonel's briefcase. Hello, operator. This is Captain Drummond speaking from Colonel Nielsen's residence. Will you get me Scotland Yard immediately? Yes. Yes, you can call me here. Is 
you know. Captain Drummond. Phillips, old man, who did this? It was Richard. Yes? Uh, this may help, sir. Drummond speaking. The yard? Yes, get me Inspector Blair, quickly. Who was it, Phillips? Can't you tell me? It was Richard Lane. Richard Lane? Now I know why his face was so familiar. I remember his picture in the papers, without a beard. Well, Nielsen's been after him for years. Hello, Blair? This is Drummond. I'm at Nielsen's. He's been kidnapped. I said kidnapped. Yes, by Richard Lane. I don't care if Lane hasn't been in England for years. He was here half an hour ago. Captain Drummond. Just hold on a moment. Yes, Phillips? Got an aeroplane. Near him and he. Yes? They're taking him to... Where, Phillips? Where? To Africa. Somewhere near Arby, Morocco. Hello, Blair. The butler says Lane has a plane on Hampton Heath. Yes, they're taking Nielsen to Morocco, near somewhere near Arby. Yes, Morocco. I right, do send some men to the Heath. If I get there in time, I'll try to stop him. Right. Isn't there something we can do? We can get the man who killed him. Come on, Dolly. He'll be all right? Yes, of course he'll be all right. Hey, look. Bad idea, Penny. It wasn't a good one, sir. You! you you're crazy. I mean, are you crazy? Are those my pants, Elsie? Yes, but uh, never mind. Later. Oh, but listen, never you... mind, Elsie. Huh? Here you are, Penny. Excuse me, darling. But you, I'm in a dither. Have you gone slightly balmy? I'm mad, if that's what you mean. Mad? Oh, oh you mean angry, annoyed, irritated, as well. What about? Plain, Elsie. Colonel Nielsen's in it. What's he doing up there? Kidnapped, Elsie. Kidnapped. Kidnapped? Nielsen? I say, oh, but you're sure you're quite all right. I mean, the wedding, the excitement, and all that sort of thing. Of course I'm all right, Elsie. Blame Phyllis for this. She started it. Phyllis? I saw the man put Colonel Nielsen in his car. What for? We're going to follow and find out. Who's that? Police. Don't say anything about trying to follow Nielsen. They might try to stop us. Captain Robert. Hello, Sergeant. The yard calls on the wire, sir. Yes, it's too bad you didn't get here five minutes earlier. There's your man up there. There's the car they used to abduct Colonel Nielsen. You better take a look at it. Right, sir. Now's our chance to get away, Elsie. Penny, come in, sir. Come on, sir. You, uh, where are we going? Possibly Africa. Africa? Get those doors open. Very good, sir. Elsie, uh, you better check that reserve tank in case you need it. Right, folks. Uh, Captain Drummond, uh, just a moment, sir. Yeah. Well, Sergeant? I see we're just in time, sir. Time for what? Uh, to carry out orders, sir. Orders, Sergeant? Aye, sir. To see that you do not leave England tonight. You mean to tell me I can't take my plane for a flight if I want to? Orders, sir. The Yard wants no interference in handling a certain case. Oh, well, we're just going for a pleasure flight. A few friends, you know. Mm -hmm. Up in the clouds. You know, good for asthma and all that sort of thing. 
Yes, you see. Uh, sorry, sir. Orders is orders. Jenkins, you remain here until relieved. Very good, Sergeant. This plane is not to be taken out. Understand? This plane is not to be taken out. Excuse me. I say it's you. Later, Alfie, later. Alfie, open the parachute box. But the chutes are in the, in the box where they belong. In the box? Yes, Alfie. In the box. Locked in the box. Oh, that's right, is it? Locked in the box. Yes. I'll see if they're still there. Goodbye, darling. You don't try anything. He's the law. No, but I've got to, darling. It's our only chance. If you're that crazy, I'll be crazy too. I'm going with you. You're staying here. I'm not. This was supposed to be our wedding night. In case you've forgotten. I know, darling. I'm sorry, but I love you and I want to marry you and I'm going to marry you, but not tonight. Now, will you please get in the car and run along? Oh, all right. I, I suppose I'll have to. Goodbye. Be careful. Good girl. Uh, smoke, Constable? Uh, not when I'm duty, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. I only meant to show there were no hard feelings. Oh, I understand, sir. Thank you, sir. You wouldn't mind if we inspect our parachutes as long as we're here? Well, uh, I suppose it'd be all right, sir. If you have any doubts, you can come and watch us. Oh, well, that's all right, sir. Not that I don't trust you, but... Uh, orders is orders. That's right, sir. Orders is orders. <laughs> Thank you. What's the matter, Alfie? Oh, there's something stuck down there. I simply can't get him out. I'm ashamed of you, Alfie. A big, strong fellow like you. I guess you're right, Alfie. You do seem to be stuck. Lend me your hand. Oh, I suppose we'll have to give it up. <laughs> oh, don't say give up, gentlemen. Let me give you a hand. Oh, no, no, don't, don't bother, Constable. You might strain yourself. Oh, nonsense. They used to call me Little Goliath. No. Now, you watch me. <laughs> Here, here, I say you can't do that. Here. What are you doing? Oh, Lee, oh, Alfie was to have been my wedding night. By Jove, you, that reminds me. Of what? This was to have been your wedding night. That's what I said. But that's when I heard it. <laughs> there are times, Alfie, when silence is... Uh, golden? Yes, when silence is golden. That's what Kenny said. Oh, I see. And you mean that this is one of those times, huh? Emphatically. Oh, I hated running out on Phyllis like that, but we couldn't bring her with us. Of course not. No danger and all that sort of thing, you know. Pardon me, sir. Your guns, sir? Uh, oh, yes, certainly. What? <laughs> Jolly business, what? It depends upon the point of view, sir. I say, you. Yes, Alty? Uh, can we depend on that thing? Yes, Alty. Alty, it's about 1,200 miles. We should reach the African coast by dawn, barring accidents. Accidents? Hugh, you haven't had a crash yet, have you? And it can always be a first time, Alfie. Oh, of course, it can always be a first time. What? Well, don't worry, old boy. I think we'll get through, all right? I hope. Miss Darling. Phyllis. I know I shouldn't, well, but here I am, and here we are. <laughs> this is a surprise. Here, sit down. <laughs> well, darling, now you're in the soup with the rest of us. Nice soup. I've often wondered about it, and now I know. What? Why I love you. Do you think we could be married in Morocco? Or would they make us use a Mohammedan priest? Well, then we'd be Mohammedans, and I could have a harem. That would be lovely, but don't try it. <laughs> Here we go. Better fasten your belt. 
Buenos días, señor. Buenos días. Well, Buenos días, señorita. Welcome to Sukhil Thank you. Have you a landing permit? Huh? A la uh, landing permit, old boy. Oh, landing permit. Si, senor. Oh. Well, you see, we left England rather hurriedly in there. Oh, you must have a landing permit, senor. Yes, we will arrange for it at the British consulate. Oh, the capitan is attached to the consulate? Well, not exactly, but I'm sure that they'll see that everything is in order. The consulate will not open its doors for several hours, senor. In that case, we'll take a look around the town, what? Yes. Oh, that will not be possible, senor, until later. Oh, I see. Not until later. Si, senor. Uh, shall we, Algy? I don't think so. Ah, we're losing our grip, Algy. Uh, Arby has a hotel, no doubt. Hotel? Si, senor. The Hotel de Maroc. Uh, we'll escort you there. Yes, I thought perhaps you would. After you. Oh, after you, senor. After you. Welcome to Arby, darling. Romantic, isn't it? If the heat of an African sun can be classed as uh, romantic, so. Right you are. Right you are. Right you are. leave my place, you know, pretty much of a hermit. Don't you find life a bit dull in that country place of yours? As a matter of fact, Major, that's why I'm here. I've decided to have a little fling. London, Paris. Paris. Yes, it's been over a year since I was away. I'll enjoy it, I think. I wish I could go with you. <laughs> I wish you could, Major. And oh, yes, uh, by the way, of course, I'll need a visa for my passport. Oh, well, that's easy. Just see McAllister across the hall. Fine, thank you. Well, Goodbye, Major. And goodbye, sir, and I wish you a pleasant journey. Thank you. Yes? Captain Drummond is here to see you, sir. Oh, send him in. Yes, sir. That door, Captain. Thank you. Would you mind waiting here? Certainly not, senor. Captain Drummond? I'm glad to know you, Major Gray. Sit down. Thank you. Drummond? You stand in danger of arrest by the local authorities for landing here without a permit. Yes, it's about arranging for a permit that I'm here. Consulate regulations state that all subjects of the Empire shall receive any assistance of which they may stand in need. And Scotland Yard has cabled me to assist you according to the regulations. Well, that's very decent of them. Furthermore, the Yard has ordered me to assist you back to England in double quick time. But, Major, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. I've ordered your plane service, and the moment it's ready, off you go. You're lucky we're not leaving you in a Moroccan jail for a few weeks. But Major, just you... a moment, please. Yes, Major? Did the guard accompany Captain Drummond? Yes, Major. Ask him to step into the hall. Very good, sir. Major, when I left England... I, I know all about you, Drummond. You left England in defiance of an official order. After resisting an officer of the Crown. That constable didn't know I was coming to Arby. But Scotland Yard did. Captain Drummond is returning to England. He's not to leave his hotel without authority from me and under escort. Si, senor. Si, senor, Major. I tell you Colonel Nielsen was kidnapped. Rubbish, Drummond. The Yard warned me you'd say something like that. Cable them again. Ask them if he's in his office. Well, Major, I'm off. Well, goodbye, sir, and good luck. Thank you. Just a moment. You're Richard Lane. You're mistaken, Drummond. Mistaken, my eye. Major, this man is Richard Lane. He's murdered Nielsen's butler and kidnapped Nielsen. This is the man I followed in my plane. That's enough, Drummond. But, Major, I... This gentleman is Mr. Charles Mager. To my knowledge, he hasn't been out of Arby for a year. My apologies, sir. I hope you'll overlook this. Perfectly all right, Major. Good day, sir. Major, that man was in England last night. Captain Drummond, you will be notified when your plane is serviced. Good morning. Yes, good morning. After you, senor. Thank you. Do you think plane knows wrong to him, sir? I'm certain he doesn't. Is McTurk back yet? No, not yet, sir. Well, what do you want? I'm afraid these will have to be burned. MacTurk. 
That's a perfect disguise. It's a too perfect, Major. Well, what did you find out? They've got Nielsen, all right. I wasn't a hundred yards away when that plane came down. Lane's place, of course. Right. I flashed Nielsen a heliograph message and scouted around the house about a quarter of a mile away. And I waited for three or four hours, and just as I was about to give up, I caught a flash of light. Heliograph signal from one of the upper windows. What did his message say? Safe so far. Lane expecting three of his agents. Delay raid until tonight. I don't like it. These are his orders. He's gambling his life, and I won't risk it. Fourteen, you made arrangements with the local police for the raid, as I told you. No, Major. Well, why haven't you? Because there will be no raid. What's the meaning of this? Will you, gentlemen, please raise your hands? Why? I wouldn't try that if I were you. There's a car in the rear, Major. Found your quarters comfortable, Colonel? Quite. The confinement is becoming a little monotonous. Yes, yes, I understand perfectly. If you come with me, perhaps I can relieve that monotony. Are you uh, wondering about your chances of escape? <laughs> Naturally. Of course, you're too smart, at least I hope you are, to attempt it. Oh, thank you. After you, Colonel. As you say. Kingdom of my own, Colonel. You know, far from the maddening crowd. Mm. Hello, Boo Boo. Mimi. Uh, how's Mabel over there? Is that Mabel? Yes. <laughs> my pets, Colonel. Your pets? Yes, yes. I find them extremely useful. Yes, I imagine they do discourage visitors. Oh, no, no. On the contrary, they welcome visitors. You follow me? Yes, I follow you. I thought you would. Now, this fellow over here, he's a favorite. But, uh, we mustn't go too close. Oh, uh, don't worry, I won't. Allow me to present our old opponent, Colonel Nielsen. How do you do? Colonel Fernanda Ackley. Charm. Delighted. Ackley is the agent who obtained from your government the plans for the Sudan. Uh, which were changed immediately, rendering them valueless. Yes, but not before we sold them. And a very nice figure. Really? Very clever, I'm sure. And this is Dr. Sturm. Doctor? How do you do? Baronetsky? Oh, uh, have all arrangements been made for Captain Drummond's departure? Yes, sir, all arrangements. Drummond's plane will explode in midair. That means that uh, Captain Drummond and his party will vanish at about 100 miles at sea. Have you nothing to say, Colonel? You underestimate Captain Drummond's ability. You know, Nielsen, I rather admire you. I think under different circumstances, we could get along well together. The circumstances would, as you say, have to be uh, different. Oh, yes, yes, of course, different. Uh, Colonel. Thank you. To a very courageous opponent. Courageous even in defeat. And may I, in the depth of my defeat, offer a toast? Why, surely. To men who have lost all sense of honor. To men who have disgraced the countries that gave them birth. To you, gentlemen. After dinner, we will discuss Colonel Nielsen's toast. In detail. Have a chair, Colonel. Uh, thank you so much. I'd hate to be in this plane when this thing goes off. What time are you setting it for? Ordin said at nine o'clock. Oh. 
I say you. Those dancing fellas are doing some pretty nifty tailspin. Elsie, now is not the time to become analytical about the Terpsichorean peculiarities of some Durling Wurbishes. Durling Wurbishes? Yes, yeah, Swirling Dervishes. Huh? Here, lend a hand with those sheets. Oh, yes. Yeah. Be sure to tie the knots double because we can't use broken legs. But you, how are we going to find Lane's place after which? Well, that is, if we do get out of here. We'll worry about that when we get out. Yes, but If then... Lane has a place, Elsie will find it. And Colonel Nielsen, too. Right. That's Phyllis, I hope. Something. Kapara, you are the most suspicious one. Good work, darling. I rather like it, sir. I still don't think it's long enough to reach the ground. Well, let's see if we can work our way along that ledge, it'll reach from the balcony. Yeah. And only 50 feet to a nice stone courtyard below. <laughs> now, if you want to know what I'm in favor of doing, what, Kapara? I'm in favor of trying it. Yes, that's what I thought. Now, darling, promise me something. Yes, sir. Promise me that you'll stay here. But, and not try to follow us. But, but me no buts, darling. You stay here or else. Or else what? Or else I'll thrash you. Yes, Captain Brunner. But don't try it. Goodbye, right darling. Here we go. You next, Algy, and then Finney. Be careful, Hugh. Shh. Come back here. There's someone at the door. Delay them. Tell them I'm in the bath or something. Why didn't it take so long, senor? I was attending Captain Drummond. And the captain is... Uh... In his bath. Ah, then we will wait. See, <laughs> senorita, senor, senor for deed of the British conch. How do you do? Good evening. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll wait for the captain. Huh? Yes, of course. Uh, we were just listening to the music. Yeah, yeah, uh, and jolly good music, too. <laughs> yeah, sounds just like... Just like music. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and the music should come in much better if I open the window. Uh, no! Uh, 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 yes, yes. Have a drink. Uh, you too, Cosmo boy. Have a good drink. I'm just going to pour one. We saw Captain Drummond go into that room, did we not? See, here with the others. Did we see him come out? No. Yes, the gentleman said he was in his bag. That is so. It cannot be so. Why? There is one bad room on each floor. And the bathroom. It is not in there. It is down there. Then, if he's not there, he must be there. And yet they say he is not. Then, is he or is he not in his room? Something very, very strange. So, we shall see. Perdón, señorita. Señores? Where is Captain Drummond? I've already told you, Captain Drummond is in his bath. Bath? <laughs> it is not all right if my guest desires a bath. There is no bath, senor. There is no bath? Not in here. Over there. Search that room. Seek a bath. Stand aside. Ha! Ah! So! Yeah, quite so. And what, senor, is this for? To climb an alp. Well, darling. Good evening, Captain Drummond. Well, I can't agree with you, but we won't argue the point. I have Major Gray's instructions. Well, yes, I know. Uh, and Mr. Fordine, Miss Clavering. This gentleman has come to escort us to our plane and out of Morocco. I'm sorry, sir. Well, here we go. But, Hugh, we can't leave without Colonel Nielsen. Oh, you need have no fears about Colonel Nielsen, Miss Clavering. I suppose he's safe at his office in London? Yes, we received a cablegram from Scotland Yard assuring us that Colonel Nielsen did spend the day in his office. As usual. As usual. But he couldn't. I saw those men carry him out of the yes, house. Yes, I know, darling, but this gentleman says he spent the day in his office, as usual. But, Hugh... We have no choice, darling. And my ship is in order? Oh, perfect order, Captain. Get your coat, darling. Captain Drummond, you will fly directly to England. Well, there seems to be no point in doing anything else if Colonel Nielsen is there. Well, then, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, senores. Buen viaje. Yes, senor. Come along, Aldi. Uh, goodbye. Oh, oh, goodbye, old boy. I hope I don't see you again. Well, that is, uh, unless we happen to meet. <laughs> Adios, senor.
Nice people. Too bad they could not get the landing permit. Oh, they'll forget about it in an hour or so. You don't believe Nielsen's in England? Of course I don't. Then why have we been flying out to sea for the past half hour? Monkey business, Algy. Monkey business? In case our Mr. Fordine decided to follow us. So we're turning back. Turning back? Right now. If we're caught, ends in trouble. They wouldn't ask us to come down at sea in a land plane, would they? Well, let's not ask them, huh? Returning, sir. Might I suggest that we land somewhere near Mr. Richard Lane's place? That's easier said than done, Tony. We don't know where it is. What do we do, sir? I made inquiries among the hotel staff as to the residence of Mr. Charles Meager. Mr. Richard Lane to us, sir. Good work, Tony. I rather thought you might like it, sir. I've indicated it on this travel folder. X marks the spot, eh? Yes, sir. The place is just there, sir. The land to the west is fairly level. Good. And here go the flares. If anyone's watching, those flares will be a dead giveaway. I'll take that chance, darling. The moment we land, everybody get out and run. We'll soon know if they've spotted us. See when that happened. Instead of which, we're less than a mile from Lane's house. And that's as close as you're going to get, my love. Penny, you stay here with Miss Phillips. Stay good. You. Right here. But. No arguments now. Yes, sir. That's better. Take my gun. Our guns, if you will remember, my love, were confiscated by the police. Not all of them, Miss. If you wouldn't mind just turning your head for a second. I carried this just in case. Good work, Penny. Brilliant idea. I rather like it, though. Goodbye, darling. Somehow or other, we're always saying goodbye. Let's hope this will be the last time. Let's hope it won't. Take good care of it, Penny. With my life, sir. Right aside, darling. Come along, Elsie. Be careful, Hugh. your dinner? The condemned man ate a hearty meal. <laughs> Let Colonel Nielsen, gentlemen, serve as a model. A sense of humor in the face of death. Now I suppose you are ready to tell us about the radio wave disintegrator? Well, if I have to die, I don't see that I'd gain much by it. That's right. Doubly right to make it more emphatic. Are you suggesting a bargain? For my life? Most decidedly. Well, now, of course, if I were to turn you loose, that would mean that I have to establish new headquarters. <laughs> Very difficult thing to do. I have something you want. Now, you can sell this disintegrator idea for millions. Enough to buy a dozen places like this. Yes, that's true, but what assurance have I that you're telling the truth? Well, what assurance have I that you'd turn me loose if it did? Well, that's a chance you'll have to take. Is that final? That's final. You may proceed. The, uh, the radio wave disintegrator is a means by which the signals 
either voice or dot and dash code are reversed in transmission. The low frequencies becoming high frequencies, and vice versa. There's nothing new to that, Colonel. On the contrary, a single word transmitted in normal code informs the receiving station of the carrier wave combination being used in this spatial transmission. How does it sound, Doctor? I'll ask a few questions, please. And let's hope, Colonel, that you have the correct answers. He promised not to follow them, Miss. Well, I just can't stay here doing nothing. Of course, Miss, if you uh, decided to have a little scout around, I'd have to follow you, wouldn't I? An excellent idea, Teddy. Come on. And you cannot explain the means by which the transposed singles are separate from the fluctuating carrier wave? Unfortunately, no. Doctor, what do you think? The gentleman is lying. Yes, I was afraid so. Shall we? You have a chance, Elsie. Wait. You put very little value on your life, Colonel. It was worth a try. I'm wondering if you tell the truth to save three lives. I have only one. I'm referring to your friend, Major Gray, and his assistant, McTurk. What do you know about Gray and McTurk? I have them upstairs. Their lives depend on you. Now, I'll drive the bargain. Furnish us with the information Dr. Sturm says you're withholding, and I guarantee that you and your friends will be released within a week. <laughs> By whom, may I ask? The local police. They'd be informed. May I think it over? May. You have exactly five minutes. Five minutes. Come on. Close the door, Elsie. Major. Major Gray. Major Gray. Still disobeying orders, Trevor. Carry on. This chap's in pretty bad shape. See if there's some water around here, Elsie. Your pets seem a little restless tonight. Yes, and hungry. Well, Colonel, have you decided? Not yet. In that case, perhaps we can assist you. This way, please.
Stand back. Sneak up on him. Right on, boy. Fellow Drummond. I rather like him, sir. <laughs> 